these mega tunnels that you guys have over in Europe are absolutely mind blowing. I mean, I know we have some tunnels here in the US and I've been through a couple of them before. Not really that long though. This one is titled Switzerland's Mega Tunnel Under the Alps. I think I've lightly heard about this before, like in passing that there is a huge tunnel through the Alps. I don't know how far it goes. I don't know if it's completed. I don't know anything. But after I saw the tunnel that was built under the channel, the English channel, uh, my mind was blown, first of all, that that was even there and I had no idea. So this also is probably going to blow my mind. I'm really curious to see what's going on and I appreciate the recommendation from you guys. So strap up, watch your American friend get dumbfounded with the amazingness of Europe and yeah, let's have a good time. Smash that like button. It's a colossal project costing over 12 billion euros that has reshaped the map of Europe the longest railway tunnel million? ever built. Cutting through the St. Gotthard Massif in the Swiss Alps, this endless tunnel brings Switzerland and Italy closer together via a high-speed rail line and reduces truck traffic crossing the country by transferring part of road freight transport to rail. But the construction that of this so gigantic tunnel was a very long and hard process. In this new episode of Looking For, I take you deep into the Swiss Alps to discover the technical challenges that had to be overcome to achieve this engineering feat. Located between the towns of Erstfeld and Bodio, the Gotthard Basis Tunnel is a mega project whose construction began in the 1990s. Since it opened to commercial traffic what? on December 11, 2016, it started in the 1990s? Okay, so this is open. All right, this isn't something that's being built. In 90s. Since it opened to commercial traffic on December 11th, 2016, okay. it has cut through an immense... I wonder if he would have said what year it was in 1990, in the 90s, to 2016. I mean, this could have, like, took 20 years to build, right? I mean, if it was, like, 96, 2016, damn, that's crazy. ...wall of rock rising to over 3,600 meters over a length of more than 57 kilometers. Still unrivaled Damn. to this day, it remains the longest railway tunnel in the world, surpassing the famous Channel Tunnel by more than six kilometers. Launched wow. in 1994, construction of the tunnel mobilized some 2,400 people who worked around the clock to keep the site moving. This probably supplied so many jobs, right? For like decades. That's really cool. Who worked around the clock to keep the site moving. Workers, engineers, surveyors, and many other trades essential to such a challenge work together to build this exceptional tunnel. Whoa. Whereas the previous railway tunnel was located at the summit of the massif, the new structure is located at its base, offering the advantage of being almost in a straight line with very little gradient. Stretching That's from so 300 wild. to 560 meters, it has a maximum gradient of 12 meters per Sorry, that was driving me nuts. To 560 meters, it has a maximum gradient of 12 meters per kilometer, more than half that of the historic line, which stood at 26 meters per kilometer. This is okay, a game-changing advantage, as freight trains no longer have to climb the mountain's twists and turns, and no longer need an extra locomotive to push the convoy. As hmm. a result, the new Gotthard Basis Tunnel can reduce energy consumption by a half, even with longer, heavier trains, and save 45 minutes on the journey between Zurich and Lugano. Today, 260 freight trains can travel through the tunnel at a speed of 160 kilometers per hour, compared to the 180 trains that used to run through the historic tunnel. Speaking of history... 260 at one time? That's crazy. The old railway tunnel, inaugurated in 1882, was a real technical feat for its time. Running almost 15 kilometers, 1,000 meters below the summit, it became the longest tunnel in the world at the time. It was dug from both ends using the brand new dynamite patented by the famous Alfred Nobel in 1867. This okay. historic tunnel continues to be used as a fallback solution in the event of the high-speed line being closed due to an incident or repairs. But it's okay. not just freight that benefits from the new tunnel, passengers too. 
Since 2020, with the completion of the 15 km Senery Extension Tunnel, the high-speed line between Milan and Zurich has saved almost one hour, from 4 hours 10 minutes previously to just 3 hours 17 minutes today. Nice. The maximum speed allowed in the tunnel is 200 km per hour, which is 40 km per hour <laughs> more than the Eurostar speed limit in the Channel Tunnel. But let's leave the trains aside for the moment and turn our attention to the technical aspects of this gigantic tunnel. It just absolutely, absolutely blows my mind that someone was like, let's just go lower and make the tunnel longer and let's just dig straight through. It's just crazy. We can literally do anything. Humans can do anything that we set our minds to. The Gotthard Basis Tunnel consists of two parallel tubes, each over eight meters in diameter and spaced at around 40 meters apart. Each tube accommodates a one-way track. However, there is no additional tube to evacuate passengers in the event of an accident, breakdown, or fire, as is the case Eek. in the Channel Tunnel. Instead, transverse galleries connect the two tubes every 325 meters. These allow stranded passengers yeah. to reach the adjacent tube. The tunnel is also equipped with two emergency stop stations in the event of a problem. The tunnel's designers installed smoke extraction chimneys and powerful ventilation systems at these stations in order to prevent any disaster. In the event of a Dang. fire in one of the tubes, the safety equipment creates excess pressure in the second tube, preventing smoke from entering and allowing passengers to escape into the fresh air. I wonder if anyone's actually ever gotten stuck in there. Hold on one second. I gotta look this up. I'm curious. Oh, I spelled Switzerland wrong. Okay, no. So it says, no, there's no recorded incident of a passenger passenger train getting stuck, derailed, or breaking down inside the Gothard base tunnel. All right. So no passenger train has gotten stuck in there. I wonder if a freight train has. Oh, there was a freight train derailment on August 10th, 2023. Okay. In addition, the stations also house two exchange rail diagonals, enabling trains to switch from one tube to the other if necessary, as in the case of maintenance work on the track. As well as being huh. ultra-safe, this extraordinary tunnel also presents a number of technical challenges. The first challenge was to find the best route through the Gotthard mountain range. The alpine fold that gave rise to the tunnel is a very... So would be a great place to be at on a passenger train if a nuclear fallout happens, right? We're literally just inside of a mountain. ...geological millefeuille. In fact, some 20 layers of rock follow one another vertically along the tunnel route. Some, made up of granite and gneiss, are very hard, which is perfect for the project. Others, on the other hand, are more friable. And this is where the problems begin as special consolidation techniques are required. Before starting work on the project, geologists had to identify the rock types in the massif. The problem was How? that the tunnel to be built was not only the longest ever dug, but also the deepest ever built. In some places, the rock cover is up to 2,300 meters thick. At such depths, Jeez. it is impossible to be sure of the nature of the subsoil. So we had to extrapolate from faults identified by aerial photography, a series of boreholes and information accumulated over the past century. Two zones presenting Damn. the greatest geological risks were quickly identified. The first, in the middle of the route, is the Tavich Intermediate Massif, on which the village of Cedron lies. It contains a high proportion of brittle rocks known as cacarites. The second zone, Correct. near the commune of Fido, is a deep, vertical geological fold, the Piora Syncline, formed of saccharoid dolomite, a sedimentary hmm. rock. A real calamity since this granular rock, like powdered sugar, is soaked up by water infiltrating the mountain. And the further down you go, the greater the pressure exerted by this water column. At a depth of 900 meters, the pressure is 90 bars, which is as high as if you were 900 meters underwater. These difficulties Damn. at Cedron and Fido had two consequences. Firstly, they affected site organization. Rather than digging the two tubes from their ends at Erstfeld and Bodio, intermediate attack points were added at Amsteg, Cedron and Fido, with several access tunnels to lower men and material to the future tunnel site. 
At Cedron, the so first wild. of the two ventilation shafts, 850 meters deep and 7 meters in diameter, was equipped to serve as an elevator during the construction work. All in all, over 150 kilometers of tunnels, galleries and shafts were dug. In this way, the double tunnel was divided into five sections, ranging in length from 8 to 16 kilometers. All of these separate construction sites were run in parallel to reduce construction time. The nature of the rock expected along the route also determined the choice of excavation techniques. The solid granites and gneisses of the Ersfeld, Amsteg and Bodio sections were attacked using three tunnel boring machines, capable of cutting through 10 to 30 meters of rock per day. Two of them were lowered wow. in pieces to Amsteg via a 1.8 kilometers access gallery. It took several months to assemble them. Monsters weighing 3,000 metric tons and over 400 meters long, they were custom built in Germany to adapt to the rocks they would have to eat along the way. 3,000 metric tons. <laughs> oh my gosh. This is actually, I want to ride through this. I wonder how long you're actually in the tunnel for. Would they say 200 kilometers an hour? And it was, was it, I'm not even going to try doing the math. You guys would just laugh. With at a me. diameter of almost nine meters, their impressive drill head houses 58 cutting wheels. Each one shatters the rock with an enormous 26 tons of pressure. On average, these rock eaters will have advanced at a speed of 15 meters per day. However, there were some less pleasant surprises. The Fido emergency stop station, for example, had to be moved 750 meters to the south due to poor rock quality. As for mm. the Cedrun section, the TBMs were in danger of getting stuck in soft rock. Only the conventional method, using explosives or hammer drills, was suited to the particular nature of these rocks. First, the rock is consolidated and then shattered. Large quantities of concrete are shot into the rock, then safety anchors, metal bars several meters long, are inserted to nail the rock. Drilling machines then bore holes four meters so deep, crazy. into which up to 400 kilos of explosives are placed. But this technique is much slower than TBMs and progresses at a rate of only a few meters per day. Despite representing only 15% of the tunnel, the Cedron section took as long as all the others combined. 12 years. Wow. In the end, 80% of the main tubes were excavated using tunnel boring machines and 20% using conventional explosives for a total of 28.2 million tons of excavated rubble, the equivalent of five Khufu pyramids. Whatever what? the excavation method used, a second step is essential as soon as the wall is excavated. The vault must Where did they put where did they put all of the the rock. I guess anywhere. You're in the mountains, so I guess just start dumping it Consolidated somewhere. straight away. Otherwise, the cavity, under the pressure of the rocks, risks shrinking or, worse still, collapsing. A whole range of techniques is available. Anchoring, laying wire mesh, spraying concrete, using hangers, all of which can be combined. The aim is not to prevent deformation at any cost, but to limit it. In some places on the Cedron section, the freshly excavated rock exerted a thrust of 20 megapascals, or 2,000 metric tons per square meter. No system Ooh. can withstand a load that great, so we have to allow the rock to deform to reduce the pressure, explains Heinz Erbar, former technical director of Alp Transit Gothard. To this end, engineers developed an innovative system of sliding hangers specifically for the Cedron site. Interlocking, the hangers form a ring that can be retracted. This flexibility allows the ring to follow the deformation of the rock so that the pressure decreases before blocking it. Ah. Once the first vault has been built, a cushioned lining and then a five millimeter thick waterproof layer cover it to protect a second vault from water infiltration. The inner vault, built in concrete and protected from seepage, is designed to withstand rock thrusts alone for the tunnel's 100-year lifespan. Beyond that, reconsolidation work may be required to extend the operating life of the tunnel. A hundred years? I feel like this thing will last way longer. I mean, I'm sure it's just got to be main, like maintained or have more maintenance done on it once they kind of hit that hundred-year mark. Know, engineering yeah. work was completed on March 2012 when the last concrete block was poured. 
This was a relief for the crews, who worked day and night in difficult conditions, as the average temperature in the tunnel was 28 degrees Celsius, thanks to a water cooling system. Without this system, the temperature would otherwise have averaged 45 degrees Celsius. Dang. The final stage in this titanic project is the installation of the railway installations that will enable the tunnel to be operated. Tracks, points, power supply, radio, and telephone links, not forgetting, of course, the signs for train traffic. Unlike most other tunnels, the Gotthard Tunnel has no light signals. Instead, positioning beacons on the tracks ensure that the location of trains in the tunnel is always known. A specific software system wow. for preventive incident detection is also installed. Based on information sent by the trains, automatic scenarios can be triggered, such as the activation of the tunnel ventilation system in the event of prolonged stoppage of the train in the middle of the track. With this tunnel, inaugurated on June 1, 2016, Switzerland can congratulate itself on having achieved the record for the longest railway tunnel ever dug for the third time. In the end, it took 22 years to complete the tunnel, and a further four years if we include years. the additional Senarai basis tunnel, completed in 2020. But unfortunately for the Swiss, the Gotthard Tunnel won't remain the longest for long, as another mega-project is soon to overtake it, the Montsenis Basis Tunnel. Construction of this mega-project began in 2016, and it is set to extend 400 meters beyond the Gotthard Tunnel. It will enable France and Italy to bring the cities of Lyon and Turin closer together via a transalpine high-speed line. Wow. Scheduled to come into service by 2030, the line should save two hours on the current journey time, which stands at four hours, 15 minutes for the fastest connections. In the meantime, if you've enjoyed this video, don't hesitate to give a like and subscribe. I did. Uh, that was a great video. I'm a little taken back. I can't believe they're building one that's even going to be longer. And it'll be done in 2030. That's nuts. Like, you guys have some of the craziest construction projects that you're doing in Europe, and I'm here for it. Uh, I'll have a link down in the description for the channel Looking For, who we just checked out. Really good stuff. Actually, I'm going to hit subscribe. And if you guys enjoyed this video, hit the like button on the way out, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.